let's try to get at this another way and talk a little bit about families. Uh, you know, we know that enslaved people who worked in other people's families were certainly had neither property in their own labor nor any sense of freedom. Did enslaved, did newly freed women, men, but particularly women, want to create families? Were these going to be to replicate the families of the white people they were familiar with? What, what are we talking about when we're talking about how formerly enslaved people imagine families and then actually create them? We're not quite sure uh, what we're talking about. Um, there is one body of scholarship that says that freedom meant to black people the right to constitute something along the lines of white families, you know, uh, a nuclear heterosexual domesticity. Domestic, right. Um, and certainly there's all kinds of evidence for that. Um, at the same time, I think that um, we have a great deal of evidence that says that black people were experimenting too, that mainly they wanted the security of their families. They wanted mm -hmm. their children, they wanted children, but they wanted those children to be protected. And so for the first time, you could want to have a baby and also feel that maybe you could protect that child. Um, but the nature of the family unit was in flux. Um, and in part, it was because the war had disrupted families once again. You know, the, the domestic slave trade had done it before, and now the war. And so what I see happening um, in many places is that black people come out of the war and slavery with very flexible notions of what family means. You see women moving in with other women, especially mm -hmm. among war widows, w women whose uh, husbands were black soldiers and died in the war. And these women meet in the camps, right? And they reconstitute communities and families. They are there for each other. And when the war ends, they move in with each other. They help each other um, with their children if the husband is um, deceased. By the late 19th century, for sure, the traditional ideas about what makes a family and how a family should look mm. are preeminent in the black community. But that has required some decades of work, right, of uplift work, racial uplift work, and, you know, black people being told that in order to be considered qualified for citizenship and qualified for equal treatment, you have to look the part. Mm -hmm. And part of looking the part means, means having a family that looks the part with a husband and a wife and children and that's nuclear and that lives in a tidy cabin, even if it's a cabin that it looks like a, a space that ref we respects domesticity and notions of domesticity. Mm. Um, and that work of convincing or leading maybe more appropriately black people to see domesticity as a key to freedom, um, I think it's ongoing, right? It's, uh, it, it continued until the 20th century. and. But it, it sounds as though what you're saying is that the, let's call them the middle class or the middling sort of African American women actually train or teach or take on, take on themselves the responsibility of encouraging poorer women, formerly enslaved women, to now I'm going now I'm going to get into trouble here, but to yeah. emulate the and lives right. of white right. women. It's exactly right. I mean, the uplift scholarship is just about that. That middle class black people are so concerned that poor blacks who do not aspire to middle class ideals um, 
will reflect badly on them that if white mm. people see black people who are not dressed appropriately or who have children out of wedlock or whatever the case may be, then the taint uh, uh, is on all black mm. people. So the black middle class works very diligently um, to first say, we are not them. We are not those poor black people. And then to say to bl poor black people, let us help you before you ruin it, you know, mm -hmm. for all of us. And so help you to, to um, learn how to be uh, uh, a true citizen. Uh, and so this is what schools like Hampton does and mm. Tuskegee um, to uh, train you to in housewifery and, and domestic skills, even um, seemingly sometimes more important than training you in English and math. Um, and those teachers fan out. And they, the teachers that fan out, I mean, they do like this incredibly important work in black communities who've been trained at black institutions of teaching young kids. But while they're doing that, they're also teaching middle-class values to mm. black people in rural areas.